Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbledy Wombos, who, as you can see, are two points behind Knotts County in the League One race. And look, oh my gosh, who are we playing? Knotts County. So we have a chance today um, to go from two points behind to one point ahead uh, to be the, the leading team in League One. It's a huge game for us. Uh, they are by far the best team in League One, so we've got to find a way to win this game um, or at least get some kind of result so they don't improve their, they don't like get more distance, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Look who's starting. Uh, we've got the Golden Child as well as Les Moore in center of midfield. And then up front we have John Green and John Green, teammates in life and in love. Um, today I'm actually going to, this is a topic suggested by, uh, by Ball John Green. You know, Ball John Green's had a, uh, had a fascinating career because he played at Barcelona for 300,000 um, uh, euros a week, uh, and now he plays at AFC Wimbledon for 1,000 euros a week, which is still, to be fair, you know, very, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, good, pretty good living. Um, but um, it's, it, it, it was uh, suggested by him because he's seen, um, he's seen uh, many sides of the income, uh, uh, you know, many, 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 many like socioeconomic classes in around the world, around Europe and the United States. Uh, Ball John Green also grew up, of course, um, in a very uh, wor working class home. Oh, oh, oh. That was a big shot. I, I, I must have held the, blue, blue, the, the red button for too long. Um, economic inequality is a huge, I, I think it's a huge issue in, in the whole world, um, but uh, it's a huge issue at least where I live in the United States um, because the, we have, we, economic inequality has dramatically increased uh, since, the, since about 1980. In the U.S. it's gone from, um, to, it's to the point now where 1% of American households uh, control something like 40%, oh no, 40% of American wealth, and um, the next 5% control another 50%. So the top, like, 6% 6, 6 of American households uh, control, I think, like, I, I, I'm not... By the way, all of this, of course, prefaced with the fact that I'm a semi-professional FIFA player and sponsor of AFC Wimbledon, not an economist. Um, I might be wrong about any of this stuff. Happy to upload annotations uh, if and when I am. But, um, you know, there's a there's massive growing wealth disparity in, in the U.S., Lots of people don't, or, or some people at least, don't see this as, as particularly problematic because, um, you know, like it's, it's, the, it's the free market at work and uh, capital should uh, flow efficiently and into the right, into the appropriate hands and, and it should end up in the places where it should end up with the people who should end up with it and um, those people will then allocate the capital effectively and the economy will grow in the overall size. The idea of that um, is that the overall size of the economy in, in an efficient uh, market will grow, and as it grows, you know, people's lives will get better. And I do think that, like, you know, to be fair, in some ways, people's lives, or lots of ways, people's lives have gotten better. Um, overall, the average American life, I think, has improved in, in important ways since 1980. I think there have been, um, you know, obviously huge technological shifts so that uh, most people can, um, in the U.S. can afford, for instance, a smartphone, whereas in 1980 they could never have afforded a, a computer with even like a tenth the power of, uh, that, that they can now fit in their hands. And maybe some of that is down to the efficient um, distribution of capital and, and you know, good, um, good incentives and, and all of that stuff. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that the world would look that different if we... Um, if we were, if there were, there were less income inequality because there's much less income inequality in, in some other countries, including like uh, you know Sweden, Finland, Norway, uh, Denmark, and um, and I, you know, and they 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 still seem to have pretty healthy, um, pretty healthy tech sectors, pretty healthy, um, you know, uh, markets. They seem to be doing fine. Um, I think I, I've made this point many times to my, my well-heeled friends. I think income inequality is a threat not just, oh, off the post, not just to um, the poor, but in fact also to, to the rich. Um, and that I, I don't really understand why, uh, for instance, you know, people, uh, people who work on Wall Street or in investment banks or, or who make a lot of money um, would complain about, about higher taxes or see higher taxes as, as a burden or as a bad idea. I, I, I think... I think I have some understanding of it. Um, so I, I think this is, this, is, this is what they think. They think um, 
I am paying a large amount of tax. Like if you make a million dollars a year, you, you have to write a very large check to the government or, or at least a lot of money gets taken out of your paycheck or whatever. Um, this is less true for people who work in um, fields where they're compensated, their, their compensation comes in the form of capital gains, which is complicated, I don't wanna get into it, but like most, most people who are wealthy, like that's, if you make a million dollars a year, you write a $360,000 check to the government or whatever. And that seems like a lot of money, especially when you know that some, you know, 50% of American households uh, pay no federal income tax. Um, and, and you think like, well, I'm certainly doing more than my part because I've written this large check. Um, and it's so much money and, if, and, and so much of, of quote unquote my money. Um, and I, 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 you know, I'm not, I have to say I'm, I'm not terribly sympathetic to that, um, to that perspective because I, I actually think that like, the success that one has is, is basically predicated on living in a, in a world uh, in a, and in a community um, that, that can facilitate that level of success, right? So like no, I, I've said this before, but like there's a reason why there are not any, currently any best-selling Somalian young adult novelists. And it's not because there are no talented writers in Somalia, it's because there's no distribution system in Somalia for, for young adult novels. Um, th 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 that the economy doesn't exist like that, that, that could support that. The infrastructure doesn't exist that could support that. They don't have uh, the roads, the libraries, the schools um, that you would need to have a more successful uh, kind of literary scene. Um, so directly or indirectly, like uh, one of the reasons that wealthy people pay taxes is because they benefit more from infrastructure. They use infrastructure more. Um, and they, and I, I really, I, I I really believe that. But like, to me, the, like, if you're going to appeal, what, am I getting a yellow card for being incredibly talented? Oh, no, my opponent is getting a yellow card for having just absolutely hideous uniforms. Um, and I think at this point we have to agree that the referee has made a bold decision, um, but the correct one. Um, speaking of bold decisions, how about Knotts County's uniforms? My God. Um, so, yeah, I don't... I, the, Old, oh, 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 it has to be. And it, somehow it isn't because he went on his weak foot. Oh, he's a left-footed man who tried to kick the ball with his right foot. And he just, oh, you just saw right there the great weakness of ball, John Green. So anyway, um, I, the, here's the real reason, I think, that rich people should be in favor of higher taxes. Um, income inequality is, is bad for them, I, I, I think. Like, controlling... Um, like obviously some income inequality is good for them um but like i think ultimately the the level of income inequality that we have in the u.s now is bad for it's obviously bad for working class middle class people but i think it's also ultimately bad for for wealthy people because it leads to less economic activity um it and and it also it also like the main threat to their well-being is not anything that you can buy uh, with money because they have, you know, if you're making that kind of money, you have more than enough money to pay for all of the things that you would, you would want to be, you know, like healthy and like have a stable family and all that stuff, like to own a home or whatever, like you have more. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh, it was so beautiful. Can I please see a replay? Oh my God, what a great pass from Les Moore. And then other John Green gets his laces onto the ball and holy sweet Lord, it was beautiful. Oh my God. Oh God. I love it. I love this game. I love this game. I love, this is one of those moments where I just absolutely love FIFA. And then what a slide tackle from ball John Green. Oh, he went for another one. He was getting greedy. <coughs> oh, it was so beautiful. Oh, what is the opposite of heartbreak? Because that's what I feel right now. My heart is just full. My heart feels like it is healed. Um, but uh, yeah, so ultimately I think that uh, it really, really dramatic income inequality is bad uh, uh, for rich people because I think that it means that there's less money flowing into the economy. There's less consumer spending. Um, and uh, there's also less, um, the, the, you know, on a, on a very like callous calculation, um, the biggest, if you're super rich, the biggest threat to your wealth 
is like a Marxist revolution or some kind of dramatic radical change in which people who don't make um, a lot of money are like, wait a second, why do you have all of the money? You don't have, you know, like you don't have, you don't necessarily like deserve this, which I, I for the record, I, I think, you know, lots and lots and lots of, I, I, I basically don't think anyone deserves like, you know, no one, no one, no one, no one deserves it. Like maybe it happens, but like it didn't happen because you deserved it. It happened because like of, you know, a series of factors, including like privilege and yes, hard work, but also like um, incredible good luck and privilege. And like, so like, yeah, so I, I, why wouldn't, so why wouldn't like people come and say like, no, 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 wait a second. Like, this is crazy. Like you're not doing your part. And instead of like letting, you know, letting you pay an appropriate amount of taxes, we'll just make you pay all the taxes or like, we'll take your money from you. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why rich people aren't more worried about that. So it seems to me the only threat to the only real meaningful threat to their wealth. Um, so yeah, I just think, I, I, I think in general, like, I, I don't think that, uh, income taxes are necessarily the best way to address, uh, income inequality. Although I think it's, I think it's a fairly effective way. I think that, that you also, I, I, I think there are also like overall like asset taxes that can work well and other stuff but it's a it's a difficult and complicated problem but i think it's a big problem um and i think that it's one you know I, I, you're starting to see it being taken seriously but it's so difficult now i think in washington to get anything done that it's hard to have a meaningful conversation about it but um yeah well thank you for watching we beat knots county we're top of the league we're top of the league afc wimbledon we're top of the league Hopefully soon I'll be able to sing better. I mean, I can never sing well, but, you know, better. Best wishes.